feeling of powerlessness. If you are a part of a, a, part of a group of people and you don't feel that you have power, um, you're going to wonder why you don't have power. What makes those people in power better than me? Why can they do these things and I can't? Uh, if you take that far enough along, you're going to start thinking that they're out to get you. If they're out to get you, then why are they out to get you? Does them being out to get you help explain why your traffic was bad this morning or why certain people want the economy to collapse so that they can steal your house from you? Whatever it is, if you start feeling that you are powerless, then you're going to have that distrust, distrust of other groups and you're kind of pushing your way towards conspiracies. Uh, this one's my favorite. In some cases, it doesn't have to do with hating a group or it doesn't have to do with you feeling powerless. It's just people make shit up all the time. Uh, again, Glenn Beck is the perfect example of this. Uh, one of the, my favorite ones from this is The Onion. Back during the, during the W years, they did a spoof, uh, a spoof news thing where it was that the government was creating these FEMA concentration camps and they were about to start rounding people up and putting them into FEMA concentration camps. This was on The Onion. It's a satirical news website. Nobody paid any attention to it. A few years later, during the Obama administration, some right-wing bloggers picked it up. They picked it up and they said, see, this proves what we've been saying about Obama all along. An article from The Onion, written during the W years, proves what they've said about Obama. That's making shit up. I mean, there, there's no way around it. it it's just, it, there's no way to explain it as, oh, but they mean well, oh, but they saw these patterns, oh, but this group really does do some things. They just made shit up. I, it's, it's a, it's a, it's something that doesn't happen as often as the others, but when it does, it's much more obvious, much more blatant. Uh, the final thing is stopping questioning. Uh, once you have your conspiracy, nothing that anyone can say to you is going to dissuade you of that conspiracy. If somebody shows you evidence against the conspiracy, then they're part of the conspiracy, obviously. If you see evidence against the conspiracy yourself, obviously the conspirators place that evidence there to throw people off the track. Uh, if you have a question and somebody answers that question perfectly, clearly that's part of the conspiracy. It's, there's nothing that you can say. If somebody wants to believe 9-11 is an inside job, they're gonna believe it no matter what evidence you put there. If somebody wants to believe that man never landed on the moon, you can introduce them to Buzz Aldrin, and after he hits them, they're not going to change their mind. You can have them watch the episode of Mythbusters, and even though the Mythbusters disprove the main objections to whether or not man landed on the moon, you still have people sitting there saying, well, no, but they didn't prove this little tiny thing, or they did this proof the wrong way. There's not enough evidence in the world for people once they have this conspiracy. Um, and at this point, even though we started, the, the conspiracy would start off with a valid question, at this point they're stopping questioning. They're never going to question their own assumptions again. Once you have that conspiracy generated, the people involved with it want to just shut it down and say, this is what happened. Uh, there are people who believe that the harp uh, up in Alaska is designed to change the weather. and we don't have that kind of technology yet. I'm working on it. Um, but it doesn't matter if you show them exactly what it was built for. You show them the specs that it was built from. You take them to the place. Uh, Jesse Ventura had this really horrible TV show a couple years ago. Um, and he went to the Harp Array. He saw it for himself. He had access to people who worked at it. He still went on the air with this stupid TV show about the harp array is out to change the weather or to somehow cause all these things. And he had the evidence in front of him. He just stopped questioning. Once he decided in his mind that the harp array was a bad thing, nothing was going to change his mind and he wasn't going to question any of the assumptions he had made. Um, you're, you're, you kind of get to a point where 
there's no question that you're willing to ask of yourself, and there's no answer for any of your questions that you're willing to accept. And at that point, it has become a full-blown conspiracy theory in your mind. Um, the, the last thing is that not every conspiracy has all of these. Not everybody's going to make stuff up, make shit up for a conspiracy. Not every conspiracy involves some big, vast group. Not every conspiracy involves seeing patterns. But in general, conspiracy theories will involve a number of these. Uh, it may not involve every single one. They may not always come in this order, but it's going to involve these basic ideas. Um, and each step along the way to a conspiracy is a very small step. You don't start off the day of 9-11 saying, clearly George Bush did it. You start off the day of 9-11 saying, oh my God, what the hell happened? And then you get the official story and it doesn't make sense. And maybe that story didn't make sense at first. Nothing made sense at first after that. But when you start trying to find small little anomalies because you don't like the answer, you're going to lead down a rabbit hole and you're going to end up with a conspiracy theory. Um, I kind of rushed through that, so any questions? Um, so how do you determine, um, especially in cases where uh, two conspiracy theories uh, are sort of pitted against each other, um, what, what, which is the real conspiracy? I'm going to use an example that is different from the ones that you use. It's, most of what you used were sort of right-wing kind of conspiracies. And then you have um, situations where there's potentially a conspiracy theory associated with the left-wing side, like the current uh, Occupy Wall Street, where Wall Street and public <coughs> corporations and everybody's in cahoots to, uh, to, keep, to keep us down. I may think that's true. <laughs> Personal bias. But you certainly have Fox News and other uh, right on people telling you that, no, that's a conspiracy theory, that, that that's not the case. When, you know, we're sitting there at home watching, hopefully not Fox News, but watching the news, and the um, media is presenting you with a story, a narrative, um, how do we look through that for things that are probably more subtle or more nuanced than um, the average person knows? I think you start off saying that any assumptions that I have are open to being questioned. So with something like Occupy Wall Street, if you believe that the banks and the corporations and Fox News and the 1% is out to get the rest of us, take a look at what types of policies were put into effect that got us to where we are. Look at the organizations that, were, that sprung up to do lobbying on behalf of the banks. Look at uh, the politicians that uh, put these policies into effect. Um, and then look at the sources. If on one hand you have a source which is uh, the Washington Post, and on the other hand you have the Washington Times, one of those is slightly more credible than the other. Um, and by slightly I mean the Washington Times is insane. Um, the Post isn't perfect, but they do have a history of breaking actual news stories. The Washington Times doesn't. Um, the, one of the perfect examples of this is before uh, Watergate broke, anyone who said that um, Nixon was engaged in a conspiracy to try to make sure that he won the next election, that would have been considered a conspiracy theory. The moment that Deep Throat went to Woodward and Bernstein, it was no longer conspiracy theory because there was evidence to back it. If you follow the evidence wherever it leads, whether it leads for the direction that you want it to lead or it leads the direction you don't want it to lead, as long as you're following the evidence, the evidence will win out in the end. Uh, with Occupy Wall Street, you have to start looking at where the evidence leads. And I tend to think it's going to lead one specific